Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Skippy and welcome to another video. So as we get into this, not only do I need to make another one of these and that one, I also found out that B7 isn't on the uh, sheet that I've got, so that must have been on sheet E as well. Additionally, I need two each of these, the 1, 2 and L6, so I need to make another copy of those. And also I don't have A2 or A1, so I'm going to have to make one of those as well. So actually, good job I've got more than one sheet. I need to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, and this, of course, another one of those, 16 bits I need to cut out. That's what's missing on sheet E. So while I contemplate that, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. So sheet E is missing with A1, A2, or B2, um, all the other formers, and also <coughs> B7. Um, Guillos did get back to me, which is great, via email, uh, and gave me the contact details of the UK distributor for Guillos kits. I've emailed them, but not yet heard anything back. So rather than delay any further, I'm just going to crack on. I've got some new bolster sheet, so I now need to just start cutting out uh, the parts that are missing. It may be a bit quicker to um, put the actual piece and cut around it, um, but I'm reverting back to my preferred style, that way I don't damage the actual formers that I have. So photocopy, cut out, stuck onto the bolster, and now I'll cut those out and put the grooves in them. Actually, that was quicker. Um, just cutting round it using the ruler and the sharp scalpel, and then I've used that file there to cut the grooves in. Um, it's neater and it saves risking um, the bolster just splitting at the end, which it has done on one or two. Um, but that wasn't too bad. Now I just need to cut out the innards, innards um, file it down, remove the paper, and they're done. So actually, not too bad. It's probably taken me a good half an hour though to do that. First half of the fuselage completed, it's all nice and rigid. Um, got all the spare bits, or not spare bits, the other formers and uh, section that I cut out myself. And the good news is I got an email back from the UK distributor, Jay Perkins, and a chap called Steve. It's been very helpful saying that they can get the sheets from Grillo, um, but it'll probably take four to eight weeks. Um, he's going to check that for me and see if that how long it would take and also how much it would be. I've said thanks at the moment I've made it, but it's nice to know that potentially we could get the spare parts. So thanks to Steve at Jay Perkins. Um, so yeah, we can get bits, but it might just take a bit of time. Hence, I'm glad I cracked on and made my own formers for now. That's the main structure of the fuselage built, and you can see from the difference in colour which are the parts I cut out and which are the laser cut parts. Nice sort of dark and light colour. Uh, now what I need to do is cut the carrying out so I can work out where the motor fits um, and how tight it's going to be, if at all. Okay, so I've cut the cowl out. Uh, that's what she looks like now. Uh, to do that, I sanded the back of the plastic first so that it was thinner, so that when I cut around it, it came out neater. I then used the sanding block to smooth the edges as best I could. Then using a the scalpel, cut the holes out, um, which hasn't gone too badly. And then so that the motor will fit, because I think it's going to have to fit slightly through. And I know I'm putting this in the wrong way. I just need to see what I'm doing here. Motor fits, there's a gap there. To make that hole bigger, I use the file um, just so that she could fit through if I need it to. So that's all done. So now I need to work out how I'm going to fit that motor onto fuselage here. So a very simple motor mount as you can see attached bolster to the plastic 
motor, that the motor came off um, with the Yak 54. I did a couple of extra pieces to give it more service area to glue it onto the uh, fuselage, centered it up. It's nice and central now. I've used the actual former pieces at the side there as a guide. And then when I put the uh, cowl on, although I probably won't be able to do this one handed either, it does fit neatly over it, blah, blah, like so. So I'll show you better, obviously. What I'm going to do is put three pieces of balsa on the forward piece there that this can then be screwed onto so that I can remove it easily um, and also make finer adjustments to make sure that the hole goes over the motor nice and neatly. But there you go, motor all secure onto the fuselage. Okay, an, up <coughs> okay, an update. Um, obviously, you've seen the photos of me sorting out the motor, the mount, and then the engine and cowl. Um, I then got drawn into trying to work out a better way of putting the battery in this model. Because um, if you have seen the SE5 video, I put it in the top hatch with the wing on it. It was really difficult to get in. And then I lost the hatch twice. Um, so I didn't want that to happen again. Obviously, with this aeroplane, the wings are even further forwards than this line here. As the center of gravity so what i've done i've created a battery tray inside the model there and hatch wise i've actually created using balsa and a hinge uh, a hatch which if i can pop off one-handed i can't do it this way let's just try another one a second like that so and then what it does is it will just open. I can then connect the battery, slide it into the hatch. This will then click shut. Got the copper pin there, which will then go in uh, and lock it in place uh, and all nicely secure. Uh, to make the tray, I literally just measured the width between the two formers, cut out a balsa, then created a small three sided box glued that in place, worked out where I needed holes in it, obviously before I glued it to get the wires through. Then for the hatch itself, different to how I normally do, because as you can see, I've used bolster sheet rather than tissue. I, and I'll show you on this side. I basically cut the formers, or stringers, sorry, across here. I had the right width of bolsa like you've got there, and then I just glued it gently to the center to give it some shape. Um, so that I knew that the formers were in the correct, sorry, the stringers were in the correct place. I then cut out a template of the formers, which you can see if I zoom in there, cut them so that they would make the right shape and then glued them in place um, so that it then holds the shape of the fuselage once it's disconnected, sorry, once it's open. And so if I can do it again, see if I can open it. Obviously, when you're not holding the camera, this will open a lot easier. That opens. It's quite secure, which is good. You can see what I mean about creating small formers in the hatches. And to secure it, what I've done, I've used um, double-sided, sorry, single-sided tape that I've used on hinges before. So I know it's robust uh, and it can be painted. All I had to do uh, as an alteration was create the additional uh, stringer here. Uh, and I'll have to add another piece of stringer on the bottom there for the paper to stick to when I do the covering of the underside. But I'm pretty happy with that. It's a nice, neat solution. Um, it clicks in place, and I'm not anticipating that coming undone when it's flying. It certainly won't be flying as quickly as the other models. Obviously, while I was doing that, I'm putting the receiver unit as well. What I've done here is I just wanted to see how adding the motor, the battery hatch, etc. That affected the CFG and my assumption is that if you build the model as per standard then it's normally pretty well balanced so that's the CFG mark off the plan as you can see there's a slight nose down attitude with that extra weight in there which is fine that you're better off having a slight nose down attitude obviously putting the battery will make a massive difference but what I think it does mean is I can probably afford to move the elevator and rudder uh, servos a little bit closer which means hopefully I can then use the, the original wires that they came with rather than trying to cut them out. 
So that'll be the next step is trying to work out where the servos go. But before I do that, I'll probably look at covering and securing the tail pieces so that I know exactly where it is I'm aiming for. I need to work out where to uh, place the elevator and rudder servos. Um, so before I do that, what I need to do is install the stabilizer onto the model so that I've got a better idea of where the um, control horn will be on both the elevator and the rudder. So I'm going to add a couple of the stringers on here so that I can have a nice flat base for the stabilizer to go onto. But also I need to cover the stabilizer in tissue now because obviously once it's glued in place, it'll be a lot harder to cover it. So I'll get on and do those tasks now. Stabilizer, elevator and rudder are all covered now. I um, just need to shrink the tissue. I've done the uh, rudder in white paper because that's the color I'm gonna have to paint it. So I thought it's easier to paint white than it is black. I've used black tissue because obviously I've got black tissue and the airplane is going to be black overall when it's done. Um, so what I'm now gonna do is connect the elevator and I can glue the stabilizer onto the rear section here. Uh, and then I can write exactly where the horn is going to be, the control horn will be on the elevator and on the rudder. Uh, and then I'll be able to work out where I position the servos, the push rods, and then connect it. Because these are linear servos, can I zoom in? Because these are linear servos, it's harder to actually connect um, once they're in the fuselage. So I figure I'm going to have to connect the control horn to the end of the servo. This obviously is an aileron one. Um, because the wire has to be connected to the servo when it's installed in the model, in the frame. Um, so that's a limitation, hence I'm having to think about putting the elevator and rudder onto the model before the rest of it is built. Uh, anyway, it'll probably make more sense when I do it. So the photos you've just seen show you uh, how I got to where we are now looking at this video clip. Um, you can see that I've got the servos installed and sort them in the traditional horizontal position. I've also got the stabilizer and elevator working and the rudder. Now the rudder isn't glued and I can just pull that off um, when I need to. But also what you'll note, because I was trying to work out how I install the push rods from the back and then get them into the linear servo. So what I've decided to do is using the carbon rods that came with the aeroplane, uh, the original aeroplane, the donor aeroplane. I've installed them already. And what I'll do is thread the wire through the fuselage, and then I will join or bind the two together, um, probably using heat shrink. Um, and I can do that, but that will give me some flexibility so that when I glue the control horn into the elevator and the rudder, I can then get the right position because I won't be able to trim it too easily. But that's also why I've left the shape there on this piece so that I can do some fine adjustments. Uh, and I've obviously already connected them into the correct position on the receiver. So next job is to position the push rods and the control horns. I will fix the elevator in place. I won't fix the rudder in place because obviously that's going to be white in the end and painting it uh, later will be difficult if it's on the model. So I'm going to try and not glue it in place just yet. The elevator is secured into the control horn through B8. Then, as I said, I would do, I've used heat shrink to connect that push rod to the carbon rod, and then onto the servo. Um, you'll notice some unsightly wood here. I had to put that in there because it, the, um, the rod bends quite a bit when it's uh, operating. So by putting a bit of balsa, a uh, balsa shelf, that stops it. Um, I'll do a quick video of it working once I've done the elevator, uh, the rudder, sorry. You'll also notice I've started putting on some stringers at the back here. Uh, the reason for that is I want to sort out the rudder. Um, I've already 
calculated what the wire size needs to be. So this is it here and where it fits. Um, but I want to cover this back end with tissue. So it does once the rudder's on, I won't be able to do that top bit or smooth it off. So I'm just going to cover this last section in tissue and then I probably will fix the rudder in place so that then the rear tail section is complete. Uh, and then that will be the fuselage to this stage done uh, and the rest will be done in the next video. I've positioned the rudder control horn in the right place, put the wire through the push rod through, threaded it into the heat shrink material next to the servo. So now what I'm going to do is shrink that tube whilst holding the rudder in place and then I can remove the rudder and all being well, the push rod is now the right length. But don't forget I've always got this little D-loop here to do any fine adjustments. Okay, just to show that it all works. Elevator. Now the rudder will probably come disconnected. Let's see. So the control horn isn't glued in, which is why it disconnected. But as you can see, that's all moving nicely. So I will now remove it. Uh, ready for painting later. So. All good, all bits moving. I'll call the end of this video for now. Um, and then the next video, I will complete the wing, start the covering and see how we go on time. Apologies, this is taking so long, but you can see how I've got to where I am now, uh, which I think is good progress. Thanks for watching.